On my second trip to Mauritania, my sister, Emily, may Allah bless her. And if she ever watches this, I love you, Emily. Um, she was nine, eight or nine at the time. And she had all these little figurines, like little uh, figures, toy figures. And she said she wanted to send those to the children of the village where I was studying. So I packed them all up, put them in my, hand, hand, my carry-on bag, and didn't allow me to carry anything else in the carry-on bag. But I really, I got excited. I was like, yeah, the children of the village are going to love this. I get it over there to West Africa, up to the village. I go to one of the, the children of the shuk, the young kids, and I give them the box. I say, distribute this to the kids. I thought it was, everything was fine. And then my friend, Nabil, Nabil's not here tonight, is he? We stayed in the same tent, Nabil Afifi. And he said, you know, Rami, I was sitting with our sheikh, Murabat Haddamin, and one of the kids brought one of these figurines. And for those of you who are familiar with the Rugrats cartoon, remember the Rugrats? Remember the one with the big head? So he brings this up, and now the sheikh, now imagine this is in the Badia. So this is far out in the, in the, the outback. And he's never seen things. They don't have dolls or figurines, even dolls for the girls. They don't have them. It's completely foreign. And, and so he's looking at it as like being from a strict angle, like that's a figurine. That's a three-dimensional figure. I don't want it in my village. So he told his son to collect them all and to throw it in one of the ravines in the mountain overlooking the village. So when I heard that story, I thought to myself, oh, man, I have really, really disrespected my shiuch. I have disrespected the mahbara, the school. So the next day after I took my lesson with Murabat Haddamin, Hafidullah, may Allah preserve him, after my lesson, and I was really embarrassed, I leaned down and I said, you know, Sheikh, I, distribute, I gave those toys to be distributed and I disrespected you and, the, and, I, I, and you didn't like it. And, he said, and he, said me, he said to me with a very loving smile, he said, Rami, you did it out of love. You did it out of love. And according to, to us, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, a person can do one action. And in that action is two things. Like you could have done something wrong, but at the same time, you did something right as well. And so it made me feel so good. And I learned that lesson. Later on, when I learned it in the books, when they taught it as one of the principles of our, of our aqidah, of our faith, that a person can do one action, but we can see multiple actions in that action. And so this is something that we should think about and remind ourselves, especially when we start feeling like we're falling into despair. And so this is why one of the, 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 the scholar, Murab, uh, Muhammad Maloud, who put in his book, he said, Some of the, the scholars have considered that an action of disobedience that leads you to humility in the, in the long run is better than an action of obedience that leads you to arrogance. I'll say that again. An action of disobedience, even though we're not going to change it, we're not going to say that, that, was, that a person should do that. But if in the long run, that action leads a person to a, a state of inkisar, brokenheartedness and humility, and another person takes an action of obedience, which in and of itself is good and should be done, but it leads a person to arrogance in the, in the long run, that act of disobedience was more beneficial for the person. Now, I want to say that with, you know, of course, we take it with, we have to be careful with that. But that's something that we should think about. And then as we prepare for Ramadan, I want us to remember that in the hikam of Ibn Ata'illah, he says, in the that one of the proofs that you depend on your actions is that when you fall or trip or make a mistake, you really get into this state of despair. And so he's asking us, Ibn Ata'illah is asking us to think about it. Was I depending on Allah and then doing that action? Or was I depending on the action? And so when I was done with the action, I forgot the mercy. Because if we're depending on Allah, then the loss of actions is not going to affect us in the same way.